Hey there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome, thanks for joining me today in a not really blues guitar lesson, but it could be used for blues, but I was actually working on the song Life in the Fast Lane by the Eagles. And it's in the solo to that. Now, of course, there's two different guitars on it. I'm not gonna show you how to play it exactly. So if you're looking to learn that solo exactly, I'm not gonna do a note for note thing. But what I am gonna show you is a very cool thing that comes out of the approach to it. Now, if you took that approach and you messed around with it, you'd have a hard time not finding the actual notes from the actual solo. Uh, and that's how I tend to like to approach things. But I just wanna forewarn you, I'm not gonna show you how to play that solo note for note. So if that's what you're looking for, just go ahead and move on. But what I do wanna show you is like I said, how I'm approaching this. And what makes this particularly cool, it's an interesting situation where we have power chords, a B power chord going to a D power chord, going back to a B power chord, going to an A power chord. The solo is what's going to kind of determine whether or not that comes out majory or minory. But I think you can probably hear that minory sounds weird. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. <laughs> right? Major E. Sounds fine. And this is something that I often do when I have power chords, when I'm soloing over power chords. And if you don't know, a power chord is simply a situation where we have only a root and a fifth and a root. So since I don't have a third, I don't know if that chord is major or minor. So that's part of the issue. I only have power chords. I don't have a third or a fifth. Now, what you kind of have to do then is sort of take it upon yourself to decide what's gonna sound better, a major E sounding solo or a minor E sounding solo. I usually can do that by simply playing the full versions of the chords and listening to what happens. Typically, it's really obvious. You play the two minors together, it sounds kind of creepy, largely because you're moving two minor chords a minor third apart. That creates a diminished thing underneath. You don't need to know all that, but it was kind of obvious. If you know some theory, it would be obvious looking at that, that that's not going to work out. Two major chords a minor third apart doesn't exist in any key anywhere and never will. So no matter what, we have to follow the chords in some way. Okay, and so that's kind of where the coolness factor comes in. Now, admittedly, uh, you know, there's some kind of cool stuff that goes on, but there's a really easy way to follow major chords with their root on the fifth string. And that really easy way is to just basically switch out your third finger and put your first finger there. And when you do that, you can kind of add your pinky up top there and you have, well, what's commonly called a G-shaped chord if I fill it all out. But I'm not gonna play all that much. I'm only gonna play this much. So I put my pinky across those top two strings and what you might see is that basically makes a box one. Okay, so it's a B chord, it's a B major chord. There's my B. If I flip it around, now my B is up here. Whatever note my pinky is on in box one is the major version of box one. Now, real quick, if you've not heard me talk about it before, all five of the pentatonic boxes can be either major or minor pentatonic, just depends on how you want to look at it. Okay, it's very, very simple. Whatever note my first finger's on, that's the minor. So this is G sharp minor, or it's B major. I'm gonna show you that one really, really cool thing right there. But I'm looking at it as B major. Okay, so when that B chord comes along, right, I just kind of play some, some stuff. That first, you know, there's a B, right? I'm on, my, I'm on the fourth fret of the third string. As soon as I bend, if, as soon as I take that sixth fret note and bend it up a whole step, 
I'm getting the third of the chord. Okay, so I get a nice, a nice little sound right there. Now there's a really cool kind of blue note trick. I can actually kind of walk all the way up from the B, C sharp. I can get, this is the flatted third, typically the blue note of the blue scale. And then I get the D sharp. I can go ahead and add the E and the F natural and the F sharp. And I get the really cool. I'm sure you've probably heard that sound before. It's a great sound. It's one I use all the time. And what's cool is that when it goes up to the D chord, I'm just gonna flip that one around and do the same thing. Right, and I just play stuff. Then when it goes back to the B, I could go up. I could think of the one an octave higher. And that one is pretty much right off the record. And that's that lick, that same one I showed you down here. So you can see I'm just going to the major third, to the minor third, and then do that walk up, that chromatic. And then do a little pre-bend and back to the, again to the B. So it's all focusing around a third string root. And the last chord is A. I think that's a Joe Wall song. <laughs> I just realized that. Was that life been good? I think that lick is in there. Right, so I'm again, I've been thinking A, switch it around, bend that third string, grab the top E, then the D, then bend that third string again. That third string is, is kind of the magic ingredient here because that's where that, that third, that major third is gonna be. So you can do all these cool things by bending that third and then going pretty much anywhere else in the box. And every time you do it, you're following these chords. You can grab double stops. You can go up an octave. And it's kind of all the same thing. And again, the magic in that is to get that bend on the third string and it makes it really, really, really cool. And if you add in, those extra blue notes. I've actually done a video on that once before. I called it, I think, uh, using all, both the major and the minor set of blue notes. Something along those lines. I'll see if I can find it for you. But uh, but it's perfectly legit, right? You can, you can absolutely do that. You can add in all those notes. Now, it's not the kind of thing that you wanna, you know, you can, Get, get something that's really, really chromatic sounding. You don't generally want to do that, but using that once in a while, you can get a really, really nice effect with it. So anyway, just an idea. Again, I was something I've been, I've been playing with, one of the bands I'm playing in, we're doing that song. And I was just thinking, man, that's a really cool little idea, a little nugget, uh, something that you can kind of play around with. It, it would work on so many different songs. There's so many songs that have that kind of... You know, things where you basically are moving either power chords or major chords around. And if you want that a little more country twangish, you know, type of sound, the major pentatonic is always going to be the way to go. Again, you could try the minor, see how it sounds, but typically moving minor chords around and minor thirds like that is pretty creepy. It's it's usually not, a, not the sound you're probably going for. So I would always lean towards the major. Anyway. 
Hope you dig it. Have some fun with it as always. If you have some guitar playing friends that you think might get some benefit out of this video, I hope you'll share it with them. I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.